Hello everyone, welcome to episode 92 of the Home Games Podcast. I'm Yazid, and this is Joseph. Hello, I'm Joseph, and today is Monday, October 11th, 2021. Uh, I, I've actually confirmed before the episode this time, this is 92. So, congratulations Yazid, you got it right, and welcome all to episode 92. Uh, today we're going to be talking Thank about... You. Have I got it wrong? No, you've never gotten it wrong, I'm just a moron and I keep forgetting. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, today we're going to be talking about... Client side animations. I had some ideas basically about how we can improve the way that we do animations in home games. Um, so we'll talk about more. Oh, 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 Jesus. We will talk more about that later. Uh, I also had some stuff about the, the home games dashboard and the home games route. Basically, kind of a lot of the core of how uh, home games is, is structured and, and how games are accessed and stuff like that. So I've made some progress there. Um, I had some more, more thoughts on that that I'll talk about. <clears throat> I've also got some AWS bill thoughts, uh, mostly that every time I get the AWS bill, I think, God damn, that's a very high number, and I'll <laughs> fix that some, at some point. So uh, I want to talk about doing that. Um, and then we have some emails that I want to go through some, some, uh, from the customer support form or user support form on the website. Don't read them yet, easy. One of them is very hard to not read because it's all caps and shit, but... Uh, Yazid also has some stuff with uh, Home Games it's Web. It's literally all caps and like no spaces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of intense. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Did you want to talk about your topics or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, I continued on with the uh, um, Home Games Web updates and I just had some ranging from interesting things to some questions that I found while I was working on it. Sure. Yeah, that's. Uh, We've mentioned it before, but that's some of the messiest code that I've written, so I, I am not surprised that some of it is incomprehensible. Very little of it is incomprehensible. A lot of it is repetitious, I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, my my main oh, oh. style is copying Sorry, and pasting. Finish, finish what you were just saying. I realized I forgot a note for myself. No, it's all good. While you... Um, <clears throat> Well, you write that note because it was just a shitty joke that uh, I couldn't even get off right. So it's whatever. It's no problem. We'll just move move, move past it. Uh, client side animations is one of the, th the first things I had on my list, but I actually don't want to talk about that quite yet. Uh, I just want to talk about what I've been doing over the past couple weeks, which is basically rewriting, continuing to rewrite stuff of uh, Squish, the game engine stuff, and restructuring Home Games Core around that um, rewrite. Uh, Kind of the big milestone this past week was getting click events and all that kind of stuff listening in again. Kind of uh, boring to talk about the implementation of it because it's really just rewriting code, which doesn't have a lot of uh, like content value. Um, I guess just like to highlight kind of general things that I've learned <clears throat> is that I do basically what you said, which is just repetition. I'll just try something that works in the moment and then I'll just do it again, do it again, do it again, instead of trying to build a model around it and kind of building it into the overall framework or the anything. I just kind of do it again and again in, in very loose and sometimes changing ways. So uh, just kind of a, a thing for me to note about, you know, kind of learning about myself and how I need to do things better. But uh, anyway, yeah, that code was shitty. It's becoming less shitty. I have click events working. I have the original dashboard working. I say original dashboard because I, I uh, think we're going to change it at some point and uh, whatever, I'll talk about that later, but the the home games dashboard, the thing that you select games from, where you click a game, you can you know kind of uh, uh, browse, I guess, all of the games that we have available. Uh, so that's working, but it doesn't react to anything. Like if you click on something, nothing happens. So uh, again, progress, but that's basically where that rewrite stuff is. <clears throat> uh, I'll have a pull request, like a draft pull request for that. I was hoping to have it up by today, totally uh, spaced on that, so I'll have it up in the next few days or so. Right on, yeah, nice. Um, are you are you saying that you just noticed that you do your code repetitiously, or are you no are you not doing that with this current redesign? No, it's just um, I I think I I just have a hard time um, like fixing things. I have a hard time. Saying like, oh, that's a thing I need to work on. I will just do that uh, specifically with writing code because it's like uh, specifically with home games code, it's kind of recreational stuff. So I'll typically just do it with like a like a fuck it mindset because it, mm. it kind of is a release from the needing to care so much about it. But again, we've talked about this kind of balance before how that really just fucks you over in the long run. 
uh, just trying to think about the short term. And so not, not necessarily trying to look at improvement as a more um, direct and like focusing. I still can't really do that as a person, but I think just recognizing the shit that sucks, like kind of subconsciously just <clears throat> helps me when I realize like what sucked before. And eventually I just kind of get better at it, but I don't actually like think about it. If that makes any sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. But yeah, I guess I'm just saying that seems to be the thing where I'm like, oh, at this point, I just added, uh, you know, some magic where I'm a, I'm a class and I'm going to like in my constructor instantiate some other new thing and I'm instantiating that thing and it needs access to my logic. So I'm just going to say, you know, thing equals new thing or whatever. And then thing dot me is me. So there's like mm-hmm. the weird spaghetti that I'll just add because it works. And, uh, you know just seeing it kind of being a victim of my own code. I'm just like, oh man, fuck this. This is terrible. So just, you know, kind of reinforces to not do that. Mm-mm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Nice. Okay. I got you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It does for sure. Um, um, did you want to do this as like, you go, then I go? Uh, sure. I mean, if you had anything to add to, or like kind of jump in, if it makes sense at this point, I don't really know. No, yeah, I mean it makes sense. I'm, yeah. I'm go for it. Just I'm feel... interested to see the draft when you get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it'll just be the squish changes um, with, you know, kind of like the the early version of it, and it's it's not quite final specifically with the way that I handle scaling different layers. Um, mm-hmm. It's not super fun to talk about, but whatever. The, the the way that I kind of structured the code around passing scale parameters is not super super good yet. So there's like a rough version of something that works, but not quite. Uh, clearly yet so anyway i'll put that up at some point mm-hmm. i got you i got you um while you're working on that uh i'll go ahead and say it. i got a new job oh shit. so talk about that fun stuff yeah nice <laughs> yeah we never mentioned it. i got a new job which is kind of lit um but at new job uh we're using this library this npm package called class transformer have you seen or used it at all no but can you say that on a podcast <laughs> that you're using some technology i don't know yeah all right it's just like a public npm package yeah but it's like your usage of it is might be anyway go ahead (laughs) who's gonna know who's gonna know i don't think they know about this podcast i don't think so (laughs) all right go ahead i've not heard of that no okay so so i'll i'll give you the use case for it so let's say you hit your database right and you got an array of objects out of that database right users for example okay yeah sure. um those users aren't of the user class they're basically just like javascript objects right because there's a difference like a javascript class and javascript object mm-hmm. class transformer takes those objects and transforms them into the class version it's like literally kind of what we do yeah, with like squish, squish where we, we compress it we lose everything when we uncompress it we still have lost everything we need to come we need to like put it into like the game node class more or less mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. so it, it has kind of a different paradigm to it than how we did or how squish works really and it uses like decorator functions i don't know if you've worked with those either not in javascript no mm, okay so basically it's just a n- nice way of like transforming the data or like transforming the data in a way that's um abstracted if that makes sense like it's a way of abstracting out the like hardcore like under the hood really what it's doing is like taking the properties of that object and mapping it into an instance like instantiating a class Mm -hmm. of that of that of the specified type but the way you do it isn't as like you know like prop like you know like um variables like or like uh properties like a b and c map to class instance variables of like a b c mm-hmm. right like it, it, it's just a different way of doing that so uh, it so far it's been it's made sense and i feel like it parts of it might help us with squish and unsquishing so before we continue on you might want to take a peeky or not before we continue on but like you may want to take a peeky at that like at least like their uh like readme or something and just see if you it's something you want to look into a little bit more so, not saying like using it necessarily yeah. but maybe like taking a little bit out of it like the decorating and stuff like that so i guess i'm not super clear like when you say decorators i guess i would compare it to something that i'm used to which is in python where in python you can say 
this is like a sub function of this function. So like this thing wraps this function call, this thing wraps this function call. So it's kind of like a nesting doll of, of things, at least that's what I remember it being. Um, mm -hmm. And it kind of just goes sequentially up through this like list of, of things that are calling it. So I guess what is the actual difference in the interface compared to what we have in like Squish that this other thing would give us? Um, so you know how in Squish, basically like you know how in Squish we have that big map where it's talking about how like to squish and then how to unsquish something. Yeah, like for this property. With like this height you... maps like. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically with the way that the de decorators work, I think we could, instead of having like a big object where we do that, we instead build like a set of decorator functions and then we can just decorate on as we're like building the or building or compressing depending on which way we're going what? i don't know for sure if that would work because i mean i haven't tried it what does it only mean have like to a decorate? week of working with it hmm? what does it mean to decorate basically it just means to apply a function onto something so then it's i guess i'm still not like okay today i have thing equals you know new square thing mm -hmm. dot coordinates are equal to you know whatever this the position of the square uh mm -hmm. when squish is called it something is going through all the properties and it says okay i see coordinates and here's how i convert coordinates to and here's how i convert coordinates from so like what would mm -hmm. be the difference in the, the actual code writing for me if i were to do something different um so in in the code writing right it's so like <clears throat> When we were when we convert this to TypeScript, for example, right, we still need to have an interface for it, where we like lay out all the properties that are available and what types they're tied to, right? I guess, yeah, but like in a world without TypeScript, why do why do we need it? In a world without TypeScript, it, I think it wouldn't be as great because you would still you basically like when you when we do convert it to TypeScript, it would make it better. Like it it would make it less verbose in TypeScript because we have to build the interface anyway. Basically, have to like build like the type definition anyway for all these things. Without that, though, it's not going to add that much more to us, right? But we'll, because we have to like build out like a, a game node, for example, has like these properties tied to it. You can also attach a decorator to that, so that decorator can say like, okay, we need to take this and we need to push it into like a squish state. So what does that? do what does that look like and you can literally like on each um on each like property you can define like the squish and unsquish function for it like in line in the typed definition for in typescript like in the interface definition almost okay. if that makes sense okay yeah i guess like i'm starting to see it like why it would make sense there but it seems like we're also saying in a world where we create this problem, where we go further away from like functional programming or whatever, like mm -hmm. just like whatever, everything is like not going away from functional programming, but whatever the thing is that we have right now, where it's just something and it calls an object that just has functions and then those are just calling other functions and blah, 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 blah. like it's all loose and it's all just things talking to each other. And if we wanted to say like, no, this is a defined interface and this thing kind of has a contract on how to talk to this and this is response, like, uh, and then you want to have another thing on top that makes it kind of easier to tr like to understand the structure that you like put on yourself. I guess I'm just like having a hard time seeing the like overall point. I see. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it would make more sense after you look at the package because i'm explaining it with a very small amount of experience with it anyway um but i uh, i i think that the reason we would want to go to typescript right it's a couple di or a couple things right typescript is a guarantee of contracting between somebody writing a game and what we're expecting home games to function with right yeah. like we're setting out like these properties are what's available to you these ones are read only these ones are available to be changed yeah this is how you're supposed to change like this is the typing right i understand on so, that level like why we would need typescript mm -hmm. i'm talking about this other mm -hmm. thing where we're saying if we're going to move towards this thing of like more specific and defined mm -hmm. contracts and then all this other thing that'll make it 
Like we're basically do something that makes it harder to understand what we have now, even if it has other benefits. And then later we're going to do something else to make it easier to do what we have now. It's like, it, ultimately it's all very simple code. And if I just say this property is this function and I have to have nothing else and it's just clean and simple. And then, yeah, sure. We can have this other kind of wrapper that makes it easier for developers and stuff. But then we're adding another thing on top just because like, like why, you know? Like, I see. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like somebody writing the game wouldn't necessarily know or care about these decorating, the, like this, this decoration that happens. Right. Um, it's really only like people who work in the squish files that like the actual like squish package would care about this. Right. Because the squish package is what controls right now what how a game node becomes just like the, the like unsigned integer array that gets sent. And then it also controls how that unsigned integer array becomes the game node class again, mm-hmm. right? So that right, like that transformation right there is what this class, like that's what like that's what that npm package like really uses, mm-hmm. like is really like used for. Not in uh, unsigned, it's mostly used for like JSON into class, right? Yeah. But I mean, it's like this similar concept. I don't know if this would even be a good idea. Yeah. I, it's just something that I, I saw and I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's like a different way of doing what we're doing with squishing and unsquishing. So it might be something to look into. Um, the thing I would say that I think would be nicer for it is you don't need to know, you don't need to like traverse the, the squishing object, like that object that has like how to unsquish and squish everything mm-hmm. anymore. There's literally just like a function call on the top of each like um like for example like border Mm -hmm. right border is an array of numbers if i remember right from the in the type definition right in our our interface and then on that we would decorate it with a squishing function and then another decorator for the unsquishing function so you would see right there like oh when we're squishing it this is what we call oh we're unsquishing it this is what we call and this is what the type is and somebody writing the code for it, like making a game, when they go to create a game node, they wouldn't see the decorators at all. All they would see is that, oh, it's, it's a border, it's expecting a number array of this length. Like basically, I think it's like four numbers, right? Like RGB but and like, A. That would come from the type scriptification and the the deck like the definition of an of a of a type of that thing. But this other mm-hmm. thing would be decorators and whatever. I guess I'm just I'm like kind of being a dick because I'm <laughs> I'm super strong against like adding things without like a clear intent as to why. And so mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we can structure things better, but I think if someone is going to be curious to know, like to want to know how squish works and they know JavaScript, well, I guess that's all. my point is if you know, if you, if you want to get good at home games code, you're good at JavaScript and that gives you the best knowledge of how this works instead of, um. Uh, instead of just depending on things like I guess I guess I've said it before, but like Express, where if you if you go on Stack Overflow and you'll you'll find several questions of people just saying like, how does app dot listen work? And it's because they like they lack the fundamental understanding of how JavaScript works. They just know that Express is this thing that they have to say require Express, and then I say this, and then I just have a web server. And <laughs> if I wanted to go and learn how Express works. I, I would probably die reading Express code because it is just like so crazy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I want to avoid those kinds of hurdles. So like, yeah, I guess this thing sounds useful, like to go and learn about how someone who knows what they're doing did this kind of stuff. But I guess like just adding. Oh, decorator, thing, decorators are in node. Like they're core to node. Well, I mean, it's still a f- NPM package. Like it's still no, someone no, no. else's code. Class transformer is the package, but it uses decorators. But a decorator itself is just in node. Sure, but then I guess it's like a, de- like, a decorator style function is just in node. Sorry. Well, then it sounds like this is a light wrapper around built-in JavaScript functions, yes, which we don't it is, need. But, yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't saying use this npm package at all. What I was saying is that if we look at this package and maybe like take a look at it and see if maybe we want to take pieces out of it yeah. not like using the package itself but using that decorator style and applying it to our squishing and unsquishing sure yeah i mean yeah i guess yeah i would like to see a problem before mm-hmm. i kind of look for a, a solution yeah I, I get basically it's just an, a different approach to solving the same problem that squishing and unsquishing solves mm-hmm. so to me i was like oh that's like the same 
it's solving the same problem kind of yeah. but in a different way so maybe there's like something we could take out of it or maybe we don't like that approach i wasn't really sure sure but i did want to point that out because i was like oh maybe joseph wants to take a peek at that too and i might come back later on and be like yeah we should maybe use this or maybe we shouldn't as i get more experience with it yeah but just like off the cuff when i saw it i was like that's like super similar to what squish does for home games nice well yeah i just i like uh I like when we see things that we think we need that exist elsewhere because it shows that we're not insane and that, you know, <laughs> yeah. a need for this kind of stuff exists, I guess. Uh, at least some of our libraries. Yeah, and also the other thing, too, for me was I was like, oh, my God, that's really, like, the short side of what Squish does. <laughs> like, really, when you, like, bore it down, like, that's what Squish does. Like, it yeah. just it takes... A class and compresses it or it takes a compressed version and then like reflates it yeah into a class yeah it's like ah oh, sick there's a thing that google has called proto buffs i remember hearing about years ago i don't remember what it is but it sounds like something that was supposed to be like smaller data over the network which is kind of the whole my original intent for squish um so maybe that like is secretly the best thing ever and i just have never used it or whatever anyway um yeah squish is just like a weird thing that kind of became something else than i think what i intended it for so anyway mm -hmm. kind of kind of fun building a, a whole thing and being overwhelmed <laughs> by all of it <laughs> uh, do you have any other stuff before i go to my next bullet point the hall yours man okay uh, also, sorry, I feel like I came off like a dick there. No, it's I all dick? good, dude. I'm, it, I'm not married to it. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because, so you said, you said, I think it would be able to help us with squish and unsquish. And I immediately was, was like, what do we need help with? And so instead of making it clear that that was my thing, I was just a dick. So sorry if I came off like a dick. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. It's just something to take a look at, baby. I don't know if it'll actually help us or not. It's just it's like, oh, it's solving a similar problem, but differently. So I don't know if there's like takeaways. Yeah. No, if it's especially if it's just like a light, simple, easy to understand wrapper. I guess that's my ultimate thing is if, if, if you have a library, like if it, it you, know, you should be able to understand like the code from a, a night of reading it or whatever, instead of. It's like, well, this thing does what you need to do, and I'll figure it out later. And then you never do, and then you're fucked. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, I had a, I had a thing about client side animation that I will talk about now because it's more kind of deep home game stuff, or not so deep, I guess. Um, so anyway, I was thinking I, when I originally did animations, I was thinking uh, we can just kind of do it all on the server side, where basically each frame of an animation is a new state and that new state is broadcast out to all the listeners. Everybody sees a new frame of the animation. Uh, that's really like, you know, it works in a simple way. Um, it's not super performant, but it works. Uh, but in order to ever have like a truly smooth animation, and I was really thinking about this because the new iPhones have 120 hertz screens and really fucking nice. So uh, <laughs> fast animations and like super fluid animations are the best thing that phones do they're like so pretty anyway uh, i love that that kind of stuff and i want to be able to support something that looks smooth and nice and good in our animations and as long as we do them on the server that just won't be possible you'll never have 120 fps animation coming from 120 uh packets coming over in a second like it's just it's it's not gonna happen um or maybe it will, and I'm, you know, like, regret those words in five years when we all have, like, you know, whatever, supercomputers, and whatever. Anyway. Um, Quantum internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was thinking we should do something with animations where we basically encode them in some sort of uh, format that can be parsed by a client, and then a client can basically know how to perform an animation. Uh, basically, it's like instructions on moving from this state to this state. You should do like this color gradient over this set of time and you should move this thing from to from here to here at this angle you know what I mean? like some sort of mm. way to provide those instructions over the over the network as opposed to doing the frame and then sending it so over. like how svg works uh uh i don't know how svg animate like are, are there animations like proper transitions and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and natively supported in SVG, I believe so. Because I believe so. Okay, because I don't know. How, I, I imagine that would be like CSS animations on top of an SVG. 
th- I don't actually know how it would go. Um, I, I'll, I'll look at that this week. I'm not sure, actually. Um, I thought the SVG animations work is it's with JavaScript to do the animation where it'll, like, move. Like, say you have, like, a, a moon and, like, a little, like, satellite orbiting it. Mm. It'll, like, I think it's either CSS or JavaScript will, like, move one of the pieces around okay. in, like, a circle. Um, but, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to, like, interrupt. No, 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 no worries. Also, the timing on this is weird because we're doing this remote again because uh, life's been fucking weird for a month. But, anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know how, how that stuff is handled on SVG. Like, at the moment, I, I just know... Um, my only experience with SVG is basically that you give it drawing instructions for an individual frame, but I don't know about telling it how to manipulate something that's already in its kind of uh, DOM or whatever um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to make it look a certain way when, when you, without actually manipulating the DOM itself. Uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah, like the, at the moment we basically just say, here is the here are the instructions for how to draw this frame. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, at every point during the animation, we say, here's the instructions for how to draw this frame. And the frame is basically like me moving my arm from here to here to here to here to here. Every single time it's a new thing. Um, as opposed to saying, you're going to be here and your end state is going to be here. And I want you to just smoothly do this, right? Because mm-hmm. this thing is predictable. Like, we can't... Uh, we can't For people who are listening and... Audio yeah, only. Joseph had his hand at the twelve o'clock and moved <laughs> to the three o'clock. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, continue. Uh, anyway, yeah, basically, we just need some way to, to to encode that data and kind of fuck with it and see if it's a good idea to do it like that or a bad idea to do it like that and, and that kind of stuff. So I was thinking it'd be kind of a cool project to <laughs> give to you if you're interested in, in figuring that out. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, I, I think it should work like our assets do, where our assets are these kind of blobs of of data that we just have. Um, you know, we basically fed from the network, from from the actual internet, and saved to disk. Uh, and then we send those over. At the start of the game, we send like an asset bundle, and it's just all these different named assets, like key to value, key to value of name and blob. And then later on, those names are referenced, and then the blobs are just kind of painted on screen or played the the sound or whatever. Um, so if we have that for animations where a thing says, "Hey, here's my floopy doop animation," so later on when I hit the X key do a floopy doop and then make my arms go like this or whatever. And so the client can just know how to do that and play it smoothly. Um, it might be a terrible idea. I don't actually know, but I think it'd be cool to look into. I, uh, <clears throat> eh, you know how flash the old animation thing had a security problem. Hmm. I think that that, was part of what the security problem with flash was is that you could encode because what you're basically asking to do is to pass along java and script instructions presumably no. or css instructions or something to like slowly move the animation through its fate no it's like right? a, i'm saying like a proprietary not proprietary like some sort of just a, the same way that squish is like a custom way of just giving data not functions mm-hmm. but the output of functions like uh the, the animation is just instructions. It's not the actual implementation of the instructions. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's, you know what I mean? It's like a different thing. It's not actual execution. It's instructions for execution. You can't actually inject code this way. So you want it to be like an array of positional information? Well, I don't know what the actual... Or like array of renders? I don't understand. No, I think, well, I don't really know what the specifics would be. Uh, in the same way that I can define a CSS animation today, and I can say when the mm, when the screen or sorry when this rectangle is resized, play this animation that like makes its outside all warbly, and there's like this code to define that animation, and I can refer to this animation in CSS for this mm-hmm. class or whatever. Basically, I want to mimic that, where I can have some sort of way to define. An animation and then reference that animation by name so I can tell the client perform animation X on on uh, entity Y and then entity Y will kind of uh, change its display on the client and do that animation without modifying its because it, right the whole thing is that it's not modifying its actual state it's just a visual thing that the client cares about does that make sense 
Like yes, I think. Like yeah, like I'll have to think about this more. I may hit you up yeah. with some more questions. Yeah, but my big fear is we end up recreating what amounts to flash innovations. No, I mean because we just have right. We have today. We have um, uh, whatever. Like I said, we we just have data that we refer to by name, and essentially that's all animations are. It's just, it's just a set of of transformations a set of instructions it's not quite data but it's like the instructions themselves are just data i guess it's just numbers and says like hey when i say to do this make your color blue that's not implementation of turning the color blue it's an instruction to the client to turn the color blue whatever that means to the client because it'll change on a javascript client versus a ios client versus whatever else Mm -hmm. so like the so it's really just like how to change properties on a game node then uh but the i would start with a css animation because that's likely how we'll implement it on the browser by converting whatever we have from the game server to a css animation so it's again it's not like an implementation of css it's a it's a transformation of one thing to another thing you know like instructions on how to do something it's not the thing itself uh Mm -hmm. so it's like a proof of concept if you can get a css animation to transition from a red to a blue over a second or whatever right like a gradient there's like a there's like a basic animation i think that you can find like whatever for that and then if you could find a way to encode that on the server and send it over as like from red to blue over this time period and you can encode that however you want could even be json doesn't have to be with squish um and just see just see how that goes like again it could be a terrible idea for whatever reason um but yeah Uh, okay is this opposed to excuse me (sighs) sorry i don't mean to make this a whole thing about this but um is it better to do that than just to Because we're gonna have like an animation library, right? Right oh, now yeah. we have an animation, the fade in animation or fade out animation. Right now it's in core, but yeah. in one of my PRs it was supposed to get moved to Squish, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So so that that animation will be in Squish. The web client has access to Squish, so it has access to our library of animations. So wouldn't it be better to be like use this animation? And here's the arguments for it. But the actual implementation of the animation is the problem. Because there is there is no actual concept of an animation today on the client. The fade in and fade out are actually the server updating the alpha channel on the, the background of the modal several times over the course of some time period. And then it'll send a new update to the client. But it doesn't know it's animating anything. It's just blindly rendering new states. So, I see. Yeah. So if there so, was a way to say like this is a modal, but when you first render it, it's clear. When you after a second, it's gray. That's I see. Like the implementation of the animation on the client, we need a way to tell the client to do that and actually know it's an animation. So basically, we need a we need like a mirrored set between what the animation is on the server side and what an animation can be on the client side. So it'd be like for the fade in, there's like the fade in on the server side so you can do a server side render of it, or there's a fade in on the client side. And the client side implementation is probably gonna be like a CSS animation. And you still would pass it in like, here's the game node I assume we were gonna we're gonna target to like update. And here's like the animation that's gonna be applied to it. Right? I suppose, or something similar. I suppose I we assume. can maintain both. In my head, the server side implementation is only a like a proof of concept that we could do it. But I don't know if that's how we should do it in the long run because the idea of a server side animation is kind of weird because um, if the server is only responsible for a game's state, I guess there's a state of an animation, but I don't know if a server has to care about that if a, or if a client can just know that and then take that into effect when it talks to the server Um, i think it would be easier for us to just maintain both of them for now and if in the future we see like no one's using them then we can or basically like uh what's it called deprecate i want to use say defecate but it's not the word (laughs) deprecate 
<laughs> deprecate. But, they're, but they're, they're, like, they're fundamentally different things. I guess it seems difficult uh, to maintain them both because, the, like I said, the, the fade-in animation utility right now is a set interval that's just doing some math on some numbers and then just uh, transforming the numbers at different points uh, to different whatever uh, because based on the rate that you told it that you want the animation to happen at. So uh, that implementation is totally different from like telling a client to transition colors or transition uh, a point to this other thing or this make this line curvy or whatever the hell. Um, yeah, I, I guess I guess that's all I'm saying is that C CSS on our client today is the thing that we would actually use to do implementation in the same way that mm -hmm. um, you know we use canvas fill and uh, border radius like we use canvas things on the client that we have today and the game server sends instructions on how to do that on a canvas but one like on some other client it might not be a canvas but it's the same instructions just however you do it you can do it over there so mm -hmm. in the same way of we draw on a canvas at the moment but it could be anything we just need a mm -hmm. we do css animations at the moment but it could be anything Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay, I see. So back to my, or I guess like the crux of my question then, would it be better then to just build that into Squish since web has access to that? And so we have like an animation library and basically you just pass in like, I want to use this animation. Here's the arguments to that animation. And then the client just applies it via that like pre-built animation set. The only downside is people couldn't custom build their own animations, but that might be a good thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess I don't know what that would look like. I, I, I think in the long run it makes sense to be in Squish because it is kind of a game engine thing. Like, it, it'll exist outside of Home Games Web because it's the idea of animations are client agnostic, I guess. So, yeah, it, it could go in Home Games Core or Squish uh, because ideally at the end the client is doing something to just rip it out and then call like basically do some transformation on on the client side which would be uh i don't see that existing on the server but whatever we'll we'll see how it goes i don't actually know what it looks like okay 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 yeah. give me a second to write down some notes <laughs> uh while you're writing down notes i'll just briefly mention that my aws bill is insane and a lot of it is uh, AWS services, probably the biggest one is uh, Elasticsearch, which is like $110 a month, which is fucking ridiculous. Um, How much a month? $110 a month. That's a lot of money, dog. <laughs> that's not, yeah, anyway, there's several uh, line items on my bill every month, and that's one of them. Uh, so I need to go through and reduce my cost just because... Uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, fuck. I don't. I don't want to pay that much money to Amazon for things that we're really not using for the most part. So I'm just trying to to optimize there, and I'll I'll report back. I'll give you a percentage of how much I can decrease, um, and <laughs> hopefully it's like sixty or sixty or more. Nice. Yeah. Um, also, I was gonna say like there are some services like the Home Dome, right, that we aren't using yet that you could probably tear down if you haven't already, the or not tear down, but like just not reuse right now since we don't use it right now well, so like home dome cost me seven dollars a month elastic search cluster mm -hmm. the elastic search cluster that we have is 110 that's like the cheapest shit that we can get from them uh i can maintain my own elastic search cluster but that would still need infrastructure and i don't really want to like there there is value to the price i'm paying i just don't like the price i'm paying so i'm trying to squeeze some more out of it but the ec2 instances are not the problem it's the hosted services it's the mm -hmm. it's the elastic cache and elastic search which Elastic see, Cache is hosted see. Redis, which I could replace that with an EC2 instance. And oh, I can okay, replace okay. some of our shit with, instead of multiple EC2 instances, instances I can have uh, one and then several load balancers pointing to the same instance on different ports. So mm. that would mm. be another thing. There's, there's a bunch of shit I could do. Again, just like sloppy bullshit that I do to maintain and then regret later, just like the rest of my life. You had some stuff on Home Games Web. Yeah. Uh, basically, I went through, I continued on, or started. I don't remember what I, where I was off last week. I think I had started already. I was in the, I think it's like the app.js, like the big file. Like the, 
Yeah, there's basically two multiple hundred long files. There's basically two main uh, client side things. There's one socket worker, which is responsible for all of the WebSocket communication for the most part, and then there is the the, the giant one file app.js or whatever the fuck it's called, client.js or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. App.js, the big boy. Yeah, uh, is what I've been referring to it in my head mentally. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just was going through that one. I did some some interesting things pop up. Um, so I was doing like the TypeScript conversion to it, and two things that came up in there is that I didn't know that style, like the property on a document element, like a DOM element, sorry, is actually a read-only prop in TypeScript. And so it gives an error. So I, I need to look into how you actually are supposed to change that style mm. uh, value. Maybe there's like a function or something TypeScript actually wants you to call. So, and that's just on me to do a little bit more looking. Uh, the other thing is that we added, we attach player ID to the window on the client side. Right. So like the window, you know, like the, the standard logic, DOM basically. window. Yeah. yeah. I just need to do that as well um, to figure out how to add that in. Because right now it's giving us an error that dot player ID is not in the window mm. which is true that's not part of the like window definition so i need to figure out if we can uh add that in or at least ignore those so that it's not like popping up everywhere yeah um when you say yeah. a style the is a read only prop you mean like on a dom element if i have inline style i can't update it like what do you what do you mean so typescript has the ability to flag up uh, you know, like something as read only. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like make it read only because it's JavaScript. You can do it anyway, right. but um, it does give you a warning. Like, hey, this you shouldn't be updating it by just saying like dom dot style is equal to whatever. Mm -hmm. And we do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's like a function it's expecting you to call to like apply style to something, or if there's another way to do that where that's like expecting you to do it that way. Because right now, when you're saying like, you know, like element dot or like element by id dot style equals you know like border whatever it's wiping out any style that was previously there right. and just replacing with that new thing so i think that maybe that's why typescript doesn't like that but it's marked basically like in its definition of a dom element style is style the property is uh is read only flag um where do we so yeah. where do we actually set style on the dom on, on any dom elements <laughs> i don't um i don't remember i can show it. i can look real quick uh, well, it's all right. Whatever. We'll figure it out. I just don't remember. In a, and I think in a perfect world, we shouldn't do that at all because all the style stuff that we actually do set is, uh, there's a big old bug. Let me, let me get him. Yeah. Fuck you, bug. It's a whole moth. Anyway, um, we shouldn't be doing inline style stuff on the DOM. We should only be setting style on actual stuff we paint in the canvas, which isn't in the DOM. And then, uh, any other style that we have in the actual page should just be CSS classes. So we can probably just remove the problem entirely if we remove inline styles. Okay. Yeah, I... Uh... I did the worst thing. I made oh, them off. Oh, it's like... for the performance testing. Oh. In init performance, we have... Uh, we create two divs, and then we apply a style. One is the float gets float left, margin right, and the other one gets float left. No, we can we can use CSS classes for that. We don't need to use inline style, so we can remove that problem. <laughs> Very nice. Did you have others? You have a question here about why we uh, use squish map. Yeah, sorry. Um, I was gonna get to that one. Yeah. So <laughs> while I was looking at this one, we use. Uh, a very specific version of Squish, which is six three three. Why? Because uh, why that one in particular? Because that was the latest version when I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> so I can change that to latest. Uh, latest. Uh, if it works still, then yeah. But I mean, we're okay, we're ripping all that stuff out. So like, you know, it doesn't really matter. The existing okay. Squish Map stuff will be redone because all these like 0633 and the version that like the latest as of right now are not, are going to be gone in a few months. So yeah, yeah, you can do whatever. Well, the reason I was kind of asking is because the socket worker on message, like one of the very first things it does is grab the Squish version that we're supposed to be working with, mm -hmm. and then Set pulls out. Up. 
the un like and gets like squish unsquish and colors out of that out of like the version of squish so i was like uh, why are we setting a default if the very first thing we do on a message is to set that anyway uh i think it's because there's some reason but i forget what it is and it might not even be a thing anymore uh so we might not even have to in the future. But I remember there was a reason. I think it's because I needed to instantiate a game node or something. Something dumb that, that was basically like a Squish thing without an actual version of Squish guaranteed. So it was just a dumb thing. I could probably remove it. I'll look into it, though. Okay. Yeah, I, w I just wasn't sure what it, it, where it, what it, why. But that's where <laughs> I'm at right now is I'm on the on message. See, <laughs> so I'm still, I still need to get through... Uh, that's line 195. I need to get through line 1001. <laughs> Imagine writing line 1001 and being like, I don't even know what line 900 did. <laughs> it's a real, real tragedy. All that code is like the, the true meaning is lost to time. It's like fucking hieroglyphics to me now. And I wrote it. Yeah. One of the big things I want to do, because I was looking through this, it's a lot of it's repetitious. So I was hoping I can build out some like a little helper file or something so we can just put helpers in there and then call stuff when we're yeah. something to cut down the amount of lines that are in this file or at least the amount of words in the uh, letters in this file or characters however you call it one of the, you might want to uh hold off on some of that stuff until you see the typed squish stuff that i have now because a lot of the the bloated code on the client is Basically, given the properties on this object that I got over the network, what can I infer about its type? Uh, and then kind of rendering based off of those properties existing as opposed to it actually being of a type. Uh, it's pretty shitty. So now when the client gets a thing, it's just like, oh, this is a, this is a shape. This is a whatever. So there's certain mm -hmm. rendering uh, behavior that is different for different things, and it's easier to, to figure that out now without having to infer it. So... We can kind of go over that at some point, I guess. But yeah, might want to okay, <laughs> make your yeah, life better. Because the other thing, too, that I ran into was I don't know how we would import in uh, the versions of Squish the way that TypeScript likes you to do that <laughs> with the way that the Squish map is currently. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it'll always be the case that, that the client has a list of dependencies uh like la like named squish versions it can pull from mm -hmm. that will be defined like before you run it um and then the game will have a potentially different list of the same thing and then communicate which version it's going to give you so like it might it definitely sounds like it goes against typescript stuff because it's it's hey, these are three named functions and they could do totally different stuff at totally like any arbitrary time based off of a network request. So, yeah, you know, that might, that might, be, that might be tricky. So yeah, it'll be a little interesting. I think maybe we would need a helper function and maybe something else. Um, but yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be fun to see. Yeah. At any rate. What a pain in the ass all of this is. <laughs> It's okay. I wanted. I opted into doing web, so yeah. uh, it's all good. No, I mean in general, dude. This this last week, I was like, man, I just want to play Madden. I just had like a breakdown. I was like, why do I want to play Madden? What the fuck. Anyway, I don't even like football, but I've been having this crazy urge to play Madden twenty two, and that's all I want to do. I uh, I the only football game I ever played was like one of the NCAA ones, and I only played the mascot version of it because I thought it was hilarious to play as a big B. <laughs> Versus like a shark or whatever college mascots are. Nice. In NFL Street 2, you could play as Exhibit. So that's really the best football game ever made. Ah, uh, who? Exhibit, what? the Pimp My Ride guy. The rapper. Oh, He's a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, build, yeah, we stack, yeah, yeah. we multiply. Anyway, I have nothing else on my home games notes. Sorry I was a dick again. I keep thinking about it. No, you're good, <laughs> dude. Wait, yeah, you do. Do I? Oh, emails. shit, we have emails. All right, so... Uh, this has been. This is why I get paid the big best folk, big bucks, folks. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, yeah, so this was kind of a confusing situation. Also, we've definitely read emails before, but it was on that episode that I d didn't start recording on. So uh, those two emails that we read from our friends just were lost to time. Um, anyway, we have a few emails this week. 
from the support form at homegames.io. You can click the, you can click it at the bottom and send us messages like these. This person, this first person, didn't re, uh, give us an email, which is fine. Um, but the message was, "Hello, if all caps from this point, Home Games is a free app. Why is this the second month you charged me? I need you." And then it's no longer in all caps to cancel this subscription. We're back to all caps immediately. You should have a phone number available. Guess that's too much work. Thank you for your anticipated cooperation. Oh, they left their name is D. Filman. Um, we, I don't. This person's confused. We, I don't know how they found us, but it's pretty funny to me that they <laughs> sent us this message. Uh, we literally have never charged anyone for money, so this person got scammed from. What if that's the thing? What if we're like secretly so popular we don't even know it, but there's people out there who are pretending to be us scamming people. You know. That would be incredible because we actually have no way for them to pay money to us. Well, this, we don't even have like a Patreon or something. So there's like literally no way we can take money from anybody. Well, the, the scammer, dude, whoever owns homegames.com is out there. They're just like, oh, these .io fellas, they're really killing it. I'm going to set up a Venmo. I'm going to tell them to pay me on Venmo for more hot programming content. And I'm going to take all the billions for myself, you know, and I feel like that's what this, uh, that's what the situation is. And I feel bad for D Filman for being a victim. I also feel bad for D Filman for being a victim, but some part of me was trying to figure out if D Filman was like a pseudonym for something stupid. Yeah. If it was like a huge like ass or something or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but D Filman, I feel like is it. And some poor soul found our website and then fill that email out. Uh, but they did say that they guess it's too much work to add a phone number, and they're not wrong, because I don't want a phone call. <laughs> yeah, I don't answer my phone ever, so that's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. to also, Phil, <laughs> Phil Demon would have been a way better, like a good fake name. So the fact that they didn't, like, that they stuck with D. Philman, they weren't even trying to no. be a dick, yeah. so whatever. Uh, the next message we got is, I would I, I assume this is actually one, even though it came in as two. Um the first message that came through was just SSSSDF, which I'm assuming was someone testing the support form. Uh, and then immediately after, I got another message, or we got another message, um, where they put their email address as the message, but not the email address form. So not super clear on what this is, but I'm imagining this person from Sweden, which is what this uh, email address is. I'm not going to read it on the thing. Uh, sent us SSS. SDF. So shout out to you from Sweden. Thank you for that. There's no way that's a real email address. Uh, I looked There's up. No way. I looked up the <laughs> the the word the main yeah. word, and that is that is a real thing. So who knows? I know that I assumed that that part was real, but the actual like email address that's crazy, dude. Well, yeah, I don't know. But well, that was cool. We have a fan in Sweden, presumably, and some poor soul. One time I also got a message I forgot to read on the thing, but the person was basically, like, really genuinely interested in what we were doing. But they were like, it's not super clear what it is. Can you just describe it to me? And I did. And it was still too many words, so I think I just turned them off forever. But that was another one I forgot to mention. I feel like I just should mention. Uh over time, we'll clarify. <laughs> this message, you have to drink a pot of coffee, and you're like, let me tell you about home games. <laughs> yeah, because <such a>, yeah, <laughs> it was like, I, I sat there, and I was like, okay, I'll just write a short, quick, three three sentences max about what this is, and whatever. And I ended up with, like, two paragraphs. I looked at it over at the end, and I was like, well, more information's good information. <laughs> Sent it off. <laughs> Never got a response. Scared somebody away. All right, no take. Joseph fishing is what I learned. From this. <laughs> Wait, why? Why wouldn't you take me fishing? I don't. You scare the fish away. Ah, okay. I would tell it too much about my passion for clean interfaces. I think you and I would do poorly on a fishing trip. You're supposed to be quiet on a fishing trip, and I get loud and like, stupid when I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get loud, and I get stupid. No. <laughs> No, you you you're always smart. Uh, um, well, thank you, but that's untrue. But people should should send us more emails. Yeah, that's true. Um, also, if you're okay with it, putting 
a fake name and your real name, I think, is the way to go. So we can at least get a good laugh out of the fake name. Yeah. Or <laughs> a pseudo name. Put, like, a really shitty message and, like, the super mean and all that. And then put your friend's email address. It'll be super funny. It'll be, like, your friend. Did it. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> what they're going to do is they're going to use your email address because that's available. <laughs> well, maybe they'll trick me and I'll somehow read a message from my own sabotaging self you know trying to trying to throw a wrench in the podcast yeah talking about you huge ass self-sabotage yeah <laughs> all right anything else um do you like slaw bunnies or snow bunnies what's a slaw bunny a slob on these nuts boy <laughs> 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 fucking guy it's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be another lost episode dude I'm just gonna delete, delete this whole shit and do a solo one <laughs> and that's the last episode of Home Games folks. 92 episodes Jonas we made it gonna kill me <laughs> that's good slow bunnies slow if that bunnies. makes it in if that makes it in I'm gonna share this with everybody I know Even people I don't know are going to get the copy of this episode. (laughs) Nice. Well, I'm definitely not going to edit that out because I'm past editing at this point. Like, I'm going to leave in the whole part of me being an asshole. I'm going (laughs) to fucking no edits. The part where I'm just like, hey, Izzy, go fuck yourself. (laughs) No, you were not. (laughs) That idea that you you were okay. Stupid. Okay, okay, okay. Uh,. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, that's all we had, I think, for this episode. Thank you, everybody, for listening. As always, our website or our music is done by our friend Tynan. Uh, he is Nitan on Bandcamp. It is Nitan, N Y T A N. Our website is homegames.io. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at homegames.io. Send us a support message, like we said before. Be featured like our buddy D over here. Um, or reach out, to, reach out to us on Twitter. Same kind of thing. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye.